What is up everybody? Today we're going to talk about how I create cassette tapes for Distant Ether, which is, if you guys don't know, my indie label. It's for Dark Lo-Fi Glitch. I went ahead and started a record label just so I can release this kind of music without really having to get anybody's acceptance. And it just became something like that, you know? Just creating fun little art projects that you can sell at art shops or even online. But we'll go over my process as far as how I create these things here. Um, I've actually created three separate albums or got three of them made really. And each one of them were made differently by different people. This one being made by me. And then some of these other tapes here also made by me. But we'll go over some of the steps that I took for some of the other ones, uh, in case you guys have any sort of questions, uh, you know, just drop that in the comments below there. All right, so right off the bat, you can see that I have my three albums here. So now the first album being A World Without, the second one is Sunshine Suicides, and the new album Midnight Ele Elevators. And so I've actually made these three separate ways. First one being made through duplication.ca, which probably a lot of you guys have already used. Or still use which I highly recommend second one is actually done locally and so this was uh, done by cult love tapes uh, so they are awesome and then this one was made by me so distant ether so this is all self-made so it's just as far as the quality goes the quality is pretty awesome um, the a world without didn't have a track list because it was kind of confusing honestly like how to actually make these tapes on their website so like you can buy everything separately so you can buy the cassettes separately you can buy the cases separately and the artwork separately um and it's it's just a little confusing as far as like knowing what your full package is if you've never ordered through them before uh so just a heads up there i ended up accidentally just just purchasing just the cassettes with the music on it and it didn't come and it, i bought the artwork as well but it didn't come with the jewel case so i had to buy those separately and i had a you know just they're already creased the j cards were creased fortunately but yeah so that one was nice it was it ran me for about 25 it ran me about like 180 bucks or no sorry 150 bucks sorry roughly Maybe a little bit more than that because of shipping. I have I, I live in the states, so it was like twenty five dollars shipping or whatever. I do apologize for the quality too. I'm using my phone here um, just because of the zoom. It's a little bit better than my other camera there, but okay. Second, second one here we have the Sunshine Suicides one. This one was made by um, a really awesome local group here. Uh, I believe it goes by Cult Love Sound Tapes. Um, but I'll, I'll actually put it in the description in case I was uh, I butchered that there. But yeah, they do a great job. Uh, honestly, they um, did a pretty sick job with the inside too. Now, mind you, I did all the artwork myself. So you have to create the PDF uh, yourself. And when you go to purchase from places like duplication.ca or even these guys or anyone really, they will usually send you a PDF and the PDF will actually have all of uh, what you need as far as the parameters go to create something like this piece of artwork, this J card piece, which will typically have like the backside and then you'll have the binding here and then you have the actual cassette. Now on top of the cassette, you can see that this, if I can get it focused, is a part of the album art, but we're using a sticker here. Backside doesn't have anything, but just the front side. But these are recorded to both sides. Now, as far as tape length goes, uh, the one from duplication.ca, I found the length that, I, that worked for me, and then I ordered it through them. And then same thing with Sunshine Suicides one, you just let them know how long of a cassette it is and how long each side should be so they know if they need to get a 20 minute tape, which is 10 on each side, or a 30 minute tape, which is 15 on each side, you can do the math there. Now this one here, I what I did was I made all the tapes myself, but I ordered the bulk items from duplication.ca. So the pink cassette here is really nice. Um, I added some of my own personal touches with my edition number, the actual cassette 
um, name and everything. Um, so yeah, it's a 40 minute tape there. I got the jewel case off of duplication.ca as well. Artwork, this artwork actually I, I did using the AI stuff um, just because everybody was talking trash on it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use it and then make it look nice. So I put it into Photoshop and did a little final touches on it. But otherwise, I mean, the thing turned out pretty nice. I mean, if I can get it to zoom, there we go. Um, it's not the best, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty sick. Like as far as making my own tape, that was pretty fun. Um, so yeah, those are my like, three main album tapes there. Now this card right here, actually, uh, one of my friends gave me the idea of when somebody purchases my tape, I can, uh, you know, cut out some extra J cards like this and then write a thank you note on the back and then send it in bubble wrap like that then it's a little bit more personalized um you know it's just cooler to have something with handwriting on which is another reason why i love getting the metallic um sharpies and then actually writing writing my stuff on there because it's just nice and now the stickers you can see on there as well um on the tape itself and i'll show you guys how i got that done um otherwise i do have some of these other tapes right here we just went over these three um and then these three right here, these are more or less my live editions. And so these were made with my SP404 jams. And uh, yeah, I've got three of them so far. So this is the first one here. And then this is um, a little live loop tape that I did with Trashed. And now I did all the artwork myself in Procreate. Uh, and once you once you have the initial template, in my opinion, so once you guys create the first piece of artwork, I would, you know, save that project file, and then use that as a template for every time you're creating a brand new tape. You can just delete the artwork and then get the text and replace the text and artwork and save your new tape here. And now I have this test tape here, so I just wanted to mention one piece of information that might not come apparent to a lot of people, but. When you go out and you're trying to make your own DIY tapes, you have to understand if you go out and you buy an old crappy tape that was made in the 80s or whatever, just understand that whatever material that's on these ribbons, the audio that it's recording, that's recording on the tape itself, it won't be as strong because of how old the tape is. And so if I record this, if I record my music on this tape and I replay it on any cassette player, it might sound maybe 10 decibels quieter because it didn't absorb enough of the sound because of how old it was. That's why I buy bulk tapes from duplication.ca. So sometimes I'll send a full box uh, for 40 bucks or whatever and it's just mix and match. Or I'll order specific length tape, which is what I did for my album. I did 25, 40 minute tapes and they'll send you that. Uh, now, granted, you want to be careful. You want to get a few extras because I did have a unfortunate issue of where six of the tapes that I bought for my album were really squeaky. And it wasn't the tape itself. It was the actual housing of the tape. And I was fortunate enough to know that these cassettes in particular have screws on them. You can see. And so I was able to remove the tape and then replace the actual casing. So... If you get my album online, there are six copies that are not pink, but they are they are limited edition. I call them limited edition white and clear and some other stuff there. But but yeah, that's just a way of personalizing the tapes there. Um, but that's how I do it at least. I you know I like to just order everything by bulk, and then what I'll do is I'll piece it together. Um, and then moving on though, the artwork, so we did mention that I do it in Procreate, and then I'll use the PDF that they send, uh, duplication.ca sends, or any other person sends to put my artwork on the J-Card template itself. And once I do that, I will actually send it off to print, which, oops, uh, which I have some copies here. Um, this is, uh, you could do, um, all of them on one. So one each, and this is like 80 pound cardstock here or a hundred pound depends. Um, you can do both. Um, and then you want to do ultra white paper just so the artwork isn't as dark as what this is here. But sometimes I'll actually have a few of them on there. So I'll have two of them 
instead of I tried to do four but it didn't work but I'll use I'll cut this out for something else normally but you can see I use their PDF size and just know that it's actually a little bit bigger so what you're what you're printing is a little bit bigger than what actually goes in the tape because of the bleed space and so that's why I recommend using this little thing back here so you want to make sure that you create one nice one once you collect, for example, so I have this right here. So this is made by duplication.ca. They sent me the artwork and they creased it. So what I do is I always keep one good one here, right? And I will always, always, always measure exactly like on the last line. I measure exactly where the creases will sit with, it, with the title in the middle. You can see my name and everything. And this is going to allow you to properly length uh get the proper length of the binding so you don't want it to be too fat or it's not going to fit in that binding and then you'll want to make sure that you just cut off the edges the bottom and top edges until it sits centered and i've always liked to keep one of these around just because every time i get a new piece of artwork you can see that the bleed space is much bigger so you'll need to essentially cut one good one out you know, line up the name, cut one good one out, and then keep that as the reference for the rest of them. See what numbers that the creases will sit on and then just crease them in using the creasing tool, which is what I got off of Amazon for like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And then I got this paper cutter here back here. You can see paper cutter. I got this for about like 20, 30 bucks as well. So really it's about... $50 is what I spent on getting the stuff to cut the J cards properly and crease them. And then everything else as far as the cost of the tapes go, which you can get a box of 20, uh, 40 random tapes. I think it was like 20 or 40 random tapes, 25 tapes, I think, for 40 bucks. Um, you could do that or you can purchase all of your tapes separately and then your cases as well. So yeah, so that's pretty much how I create them. Now, as far as printing goes, you don't have to buy a whole printer. I just go to my local UPS shop and I'll print off a few of them. So there's a few things that I want to show as far as what I print. Um, and so obviously you print the J cards, right? So you can have your actual artwork. And I only do one-sided because you can do double-sided, but man, it is a pain in the ass to actually line up. And if you do one-sided, you can actually put the, um, like on the inside cover here, or sorry, the outside cover, you can put the track list. Unlike the other one that I have here, this one does not have it, you know, but where it says distant ether, right underneath, you can technically put your track list and then you won't have to worry about anything on the backside and lining anything up. So you just cut once and it's uh, kind of neat too. Uh, really, but you could do whatever you want, but this is just easier for me. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, you'll have one of those. And then this is the other thing right here. So some people might wonder how I get the artwork on the cassettes. Well, this is how you do it. So you can order these papers. I think it's like a whole stack of them for maybe 10 bucks off of duplication.ca. And I highly recommend just buying the blank because you can literally go to Photoshop and then you can throw in like they'll give you the actual PDF or you can download it from their website and you can just create and throw your artwork on there. And all you got to do is just peel it off. Yeah, you can see that it's already perforated. So you can just peel it off and then you literally just, you would throw it on your tape and that's it. And then you have something as nice as this. Granted, you could personalize it by getting a metallic marker and then doing your thing on it. Um, but yeah, so that's the creation of the tape itself. So I hope that kind of explains the mess here okay and then i have this handy dandy box here which is fun so i actually got this um from like one of those record shops i got this box for eight bucks and what i do is i take this whole whole unit to my um little pop-up shops and things like that i've got my venmo cash app if, in case somebody wants to purchase something and doesn't have cash which most of the time is the case but yeah, it's always just nice. And then I have a few other personalized albums here and then my live tapes here and stuff. But yeah, that's what I use to carry around at art shows and stuff just to kind of keep things condensed here. 
But yeah, so now let's go into the actual recording process now that we have all the materials here. All right, so just so you can see my screen is probably not the best here, but as I explain this just quickly here, this is my album Midnight Elevators and I'm actually using Audacity, which is a free software. And this is how I get my side A and side B. So what I'll do is I'll split all tracks. So either in two tracks or you can do separate tracks. It's easiest if you do two tracks, one for A and one for B. And then you'll line up both of them evenly. So as you can see, this is as even as I can get it. And then now you can see at the top, this is how long each side should be. So you just multiply that times two and that is how long of tape you need. And then I like to add maybe one minute on each side uh, just because of this, the dead silence in the beginning and end of each tape run, you want to make sure that you leave that headspace there. But yeah, so you can see that this is 19 minutes roughly on each side. So I bought a 40 minute tape. So that gave me about 30 seconds in the intro and outro, just so it doesn't cut off the music there. But yeah, audacity. And then what I do is I solo each track as I'm playing it. And so I will have my audio out using auxiliary into the RCA. Of back of the actual tape recorder, which we'll show you here in a sec. But yeah, you can see that I will play this side, and once the tape stops, I'll flip it over, press record, and uh, then I'll play the second side after I press solo. Now, the one thing I did notice with this is that it will eventually loop back, so you wanna keep an eye on your tape as it is ending on one side because it'll actually loop back and if you have extra space at the end of your tape it'll start playing the first track again so uh, there's a few times where i had to rewind and then stop record and then record some empty space to delete some of the extra stuff in the front but yeah so that's how i use the audacity software to get the music onto the tapes there so here is my tape deck and so I'm using the Technics RSTR313. Got it for 100 bucks on eBay, I think. This thing barely works, uh, but I have a bunch of stickers, customized it and stuff. So it's all nice, <laughs> as nice as I can make it. And I've got my trusty dandy fan back there uh, to keep me alive. But yeah, you can see that this is just a simple two deck tape recorder or cassette deck. And what I actually use is this one right here, which has the recording feature on it. Um, I'll actually have my uh, output or input. So whatever's inputting into here is the auxiliary coming from my desktop. So it's like a, the, the RCA is going directly into my computer, which then whenever I'm recording any sort of sound, even if, even if it's like Discord notifications, it will end up in your recording if you're not careful. So I highly recommend turning off all notifications or using a auxiliary device or a laptop that doesn't have anything going on it. Um, but yeah, so I'll have that coming in. And then what I actually do is, I don't know, I guess we can turn it on. Um, I will put in my blank tape here, which obviously you wanna make sure the holes are covered at the bottom of your cassette. So the recording feature will work. And then you will insert side, oh, wrong way insert sorry i've got like 10 different cassette decks and they all insert differently okay so now you can see that it's inside and the way that you would typically start is you would make sure that it is the holes are covered and then you'll press the record option here and then once you press the record button pretty sure right here um you'll see the record feature light up and then you'll press play so whichever way you're recording you'll press play and then you'll wait about five to 10 seconds, depending on how long it takes for the tape to start. And then you will press play on the audio that's in on your computer. So then you can actually record onto your cassette tape. Uh, so, which is, which is awesome. Now keep in mind your recording levels. I like to, you know, make sure that it hits at least three decibels. So plus three decibels, not negative three, but plus three decibels. Uh, but really it's subjective, honestly, because now with the loud, the loudness wars, it really just depends as long as it doesn't distort on the tape. So yeah, just kind of test it out. That's why I have a test tape. You know, just, you, I always like to record the levels once through 
and then see what I like and then make adjustments accordingly. And then I will, you know, make sure every tape is tuned properly there. But yeah, that's pretty much how I get my cassettes uh, recorded onto the actual tape. Now, once one side is done, obviously we will flip the other side and then we will record that. And then once that's fully done, then this goes into getting the, the stickers on there and then the case put on and the J card and all that good stuff. So, so yeah, fun stuff there. Um, you know, obviously customize your handy dandy machine as well because you'll be you'll be opening it up quite a bit because <laughs> right now the forward this does not work i have to record everything in this backwards play button and then this side doesn't work either so um yeah it just stopped working after using it for a few months i guess but yeah you know that's cheap electronics for you you get what you pay for <laughs>